Hi again everyone, I'm Ollie Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance and this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Mary and here's her story. Hello Ollie, I went no contact with my narcissistic mother and narcissistic sisters over four years ago. I lost my enabling father seven years ago due to lung cancer. When I went no contact, I had, I had some how came across the word narcissism. I YouTubed it and came across your channel along with several other channels about narcissism. I've learned so much from you and I felt so empowered and eventually started my own YouTube channel to expose my piece of shit narcissistic mother and my bio piece of shit sisters. I am the oldest of four daughters. I'm the oldest of four daughters and I am the oldest. I am the next the next oldest sister. I call her lard ass. Then there was gold digger number two who was through an, an extramarital affair. My late enabling father <clears throat> would take my mom's side right or wrong. It didn't matter. He accepted this child and adopted her anyway. All right, so your mother had the affair. Most of the men in their own right mind would have had her bags packed and the doors locked and the door's locks changed. Then there is the golden child uh, that I'll call gold digger number one. I remember my childhood like it was yesterday when I was in kindergarten. I was diagnosed with being a slow learner and had to be placed in, in special needs class. My mom labeled me as a retard because I was a slow learner. In the seventh grade, I grew out of being a slow learner and began learning things faster. So my dad had put me into a regular class, but that didn't change my mom's perception of me. When I was close to 16, I lied to get my first job at Long John Silver's where I met my boyfriend who was nine, nine years older than me. Every paycheck I spent on myself and went shopping for new clothes and shoes, I got tired of being teased by other teens in high school of wearing mismatched clothes and holes in my shoes, doing things for myself made up for all the times my parents, all the times my parents had always promised me new clothes and shoes but never materialized ever since I was in the fourth grade. Why? Because my mom, <clears throat> because my mom had brought over her twin daughters from a previous marriage from her homeland in the Philippines. Ah, Filipino. Gotcha. I have a lot of men I work with on my channel who are victims of Filipino women. It's... They are brutal. These twin girls got the best of everything from designer clothes to being the only ones that got to go to private to a private high school. Those twin girls I still resent and hate to this very day because they got that special treatment. But but that will but that will have to be another video for me to share at another time along with many other things. The boyfriend from my first job, my parents tried to break us up because I was 15 and he was 24. Yeah, well, rightfully so on that one. When I was 17 and into my senior year in high school, I became pregnant with my first daughter and my boyfriend was the father. We eventually got married and had another daughter. My husband and I financially struggled to make ends meet and my parents became concerned of being of being of the well-being of my daughters they both came to me and my husband to grant them permission to take our kids until our financial situation improved and we agreed <clears throat> a few years later my husband and i came to my parents house to tell them we wanted our kids back my oldest was in middle school and the youngest was in elementary school That's more than enough. If your oldest was in middle school, I mean, middle school is, what, 12, 13? I mean, how? My oldest was in middle school. The youngest was in elementary school, but I can't recall what grade she was in. 
my oldest daughter heard the conversation I had with my mom about me and my husband wanting our kids back because we were looking for a townhouse. My mom then tells my husband and I that both of the girls need to stay with her because they are happy and they have friends. Plus then she also plus then she said also because she was concerned about what it would do to their minds if we took them out of there. At the time, <clears throat> the kids seemed happy and I just wanted them to be happy, so we gave in to my mom and allowed them to stay there at my parents' house. My other three piece of shit sisters were pestering my parents wanting to know why my kids got to live there. Then my sister then my sister I call Lardass confronts me in front of my my mom of why I'm not taking care of my own children in my own place. I try to explain to her in front of my mom about the conversation a while back about not wanting to mess up the minds that mess up their minds and that they were happy with their friends in school. Then my narc mom right in front of Lardass says she doesn't recall that conversation gaslighting me. So now my narc mom has lied to all of my other pieces of shit sisters that I didn't want to take care of my kids <clears throat> my mom had a pity party with with my sisters of poor old me and dad having to take care of my kids and feel felt burdened about it they have all hated me and don't want to have anything to do with me and called me ungrateful so there I am the black sheep of the family well I'm gonna be honest with you here Mary I mean, it didn't doesn't seem like you put up much of a fight for your children <laughs> at all. At all. And by your own admission, you show up a few years later and say, oh, we want our kids back. <clears throat> First of all, I mean, you were 15, he was 24. That's wrong. That's illegal. That's wrong. Any way you slice it, no 24-year-old should be with a 15-year-old. And you defied your parents, stayed with them, got pregnant, got married. So how old was he when your parents took your children at that point? 28? Pushing 30? Pushing 30? Your parents take them, they're raising them. Now, I'm not disagreeing that your parents are probably narcissistic in the whole culture. I got that. But you make it real easy for them to call you entitled and ungrateful here. You didn't put up much of a fight for your own children. And you made it real easy for them to, for your mother to gaslight you. Your husband had to be pushing 30 by the time your parents came in and stepped in. So you had to have them for a few years at some point. You were both, you had to probably were at least an adult, right? You had to be over 18, 19, probably in your 20s when your parents finally took them. I mean, you had the first daughter and then you had a second daughter. I mean, <clears throat> it's a tough spot you're put, putting yourself in here, Mary. It really is. My oldest daughter eventually got her own place when she was beyond 18. She had told me when she was in high school she endured the same emotional that I had growing up, not just with my narc mom, but also my sisters. Whenever my oldest daughter would not allow my mom to have to have her way 
about something, she would get lard ass and gold digger number two to come over and gang up on her. Which I know was my mom, my narc's mom's way of control. Now with my youngest daughter, in which I was manipulated and coerced into her, into allowing her to be adopted, I was manipulated when my enabling father was alive. How I was manipulated was that my father was in the Air Force, was an Air Force veteran collecting VA be benefits. He had told me that he and my mom wanted my youngest daughter to go to college for free because that was one of his great BVA benefits. In order for that to happen, he was told by the VA that she had to be adopted. I was at that time a little hesitant about, about that, but became okay with it. My father filled out the paperwork from the VA. Unfortunately, my dad became ill and died. Then someone that handed, handled adoptions came to my mom's house and I signed the paperwork. It was the hardest thing for me to do. My narc mom promised that I could see her at any time. Any time. When it came to going to court, not only was my mom there, but lard-ass sister was there, which really pissed me off. My youngest was 10 at the time this happened. My biggest concern for my youngest daughter is that she feel, does not feel safe living with my mom and my trifling gold digger number one. Plus also, my lard-ass sister who calls my mom several times a day, plus comes over a lot. My youngest daughter recently ran away because she can no longer take the emotional and mental abuse. She's three months and a few days from turning 18. Her graduation is actually on her birthday, May 31st. My mom had frank frantically called my oldest daughter to let her know that her sister ran away and demanded to come to her house. The police came and the detective got statements from my mom and oldest daughter. My oldest daughter informed me of the situation. She also told me that my mom demanded the police that if they find my youngest daughter to have her arrested. The officer said he wouldn't be able to do that because there was no crime involved. Plus, because she is three months from turning 18, they can't do much of anything. Gold Digger's sister did not care when the police were there and went out with her friends to a gay bar. Her and Lardass had been, had for years been wanting to drive my youngest out of my mom's house so they they could get everything, drive my mom to her death and get the house and anything of value. My suspicion is that all my sisters have drawn out life insurance policies out on my mom so they can cash in when she does die. My mom programmed my sisters to do anything for money or illegal. Getting back to my concerns for my youngest daughter, it was my oldest that had found my youngest and rightfully did not return her and rightfully did not return her to my narc mom for safety concerns. Now my narc mom and piece of shit sisters now now came to the some conclusion that my oldest and youngest daughter in her house all along, which is a lie. Oh, my oldest had my youngest daughter in her house all along, which is a lie. None of those fucktards did not put any effort. None of those fucktards did not put any effort in finding my youngest. So my concern is now that Children's Services came and got my youngest daughter out of school. My asshole sisters came to that school to meet up with my youngest and took her phone and my oldest that my oldest gave to her, but her friend gave her another phone that she can have. So now my youngest is in a youth group home for 30 days. Hopefully she can see the light, meaning the social worker and her counselor. Legally, she has a right to choose where she wants to be, and that is with her sister. Hopefully when her 30 days are up, she will be given the right to choose where she wants to be. Sorry this email is so long, but I wanted you to get a picture of what my story is about and what I'm currently going through right now. Please give me your honest insight in what you think. There is still other details that stems from my narcissistic upbringing that would take 
several emails to tell you thank you in all you do and in inspiring me to have the balls to expose my sh piece of shit narcissistic family sincerely Mary Allen <clears throat> to be honest with you Mary Allen there's not much you can do you signed away any, any rights you have to your daughter there's nothing you can do and anything you do at this point is going to be viewed as meddling anyway. You are so far removed from the equation, it's sad. The only thing you can do is be an open door when your daughters turn 18. That's it. That's it. That's the only advice I can give you at this point, Mary Allen, because, and I... I I don't know why you're doing, either one of them would trust you. Because it seems like you gave them up so easily. And you did very little. If you signed away at 10, when did you come back? If your oldest was already in middle school, so they had to be middle school is 7th, 8th grade, 6th, 7th, 8th grade. So that's 10, 11, 12. So when was the adoption, the middle school? Well, it's the youngest. So the, the, the youngest was in elementary. So this had to be... So you already wanted them back, but then you gave them up for adoption afterwards? Like what kind of message does that send to your children? You can't do anything at this point except be an open door when they turn 18. That's it. That's it. <clears throat> you know, I can't put all the blame on your parents on this one for you being 15 and being with a 24-year-old and then marrying the guy. And I understand that it's a cultural thing and you had a lot of things up against you here. But the only thing you can do at this point, because of every, it seems like everything that's went down, is be an open door when she turns 18. Because you have given up your rights to all of it. Legally and through your own behavior. So, that's, that's the best advice I could give. And I hope that helps. Thank you for your contribution and your story, Mary Ellen. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, you'd like to set up Skype, a phone call, have a private video made or a Facebook live chat, or you'd like to sponsor a video like this for someone who needs help and can't afford it, or just make a contribution to the channel in general to keep it supported, growing, and successful, because this channel survives 100% on contributions from all of you. Without you guys, all this goes away. So if you like what you see here and you want to see more videos like this, <clears throat> you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. Also, please like and share this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And be sure to click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ollie Matthews. This has been The Narcissistic Resistance. Take care.